Hello again, this is Grant Abbott from Gabbett Media, and this is Sculpt January number 20, and the topic today was split, uh, so I went for some bananas, so I'm thinking banana split, and also the um, sort of splitting and peeling a banana. Uh, it, it tenuous link uh, to the word split. I'm finding it a bit tough actually with the categories at times. Uh, but uh, we're getting there. We're, we're, the main thing is that you're sculpting and you're doing something. Don't spend too long researching is uh, my <laughs> tip for the day. Okay, so I could have modelled a banana uh, without sculpting. Uh, that would have possibly been a bit quicker. I quite like the um, inaccuracy of sculpting, whereas if you're box modelling, uh, it's, it's very accurate in a way. Uh, so, um, and in a, in a weird way, I prefer just quickly getting out a blob and sculpting uh, than I do uh, modeling. I think uh, sometimes it's a bit quicker uh, to just get um, get your blob out, sculpt, and uh, your way. It depends on the shape, of course. Uh, but in this case, it's um, a very sort of uh, generic shape, generic banana bendy shape. So you can see I got there relatively quickly. So uh, there's a banana and uh, job done. So uh, sculpt over. Uh, obviously, I wanted to do a sort of banana character. Uh, it took me a while to find uh, things like reference images, which is weird because you'd think there'd be lots of pictures of bananas out there, but I wanted quite uh, close-up pictures so I could see the textures. And I did do a bit of texture painting today. Um, I want to start getting used to that in 2.8, and now that I've realised the overlay button is all important, uh, the button that is in the viewport where it's got, you know, where you can turn off your overlays. Uh, if you tick that, uh, it gives you uh, your, <laughs> you, you can actually see your um, uh, textures, whereas I couldn't see them before. They were just, uh, they would, uh, they'd appear, but I wouldn't be able to paint on them because I couldn't see any of my material. Uh, so I could just see the texture on the object. And that's a bit impossible if you've got things like a normal map and so forth. Uh, so um, I made one banana. And then I thought I'd make another one, uh, sort of dead on the floor, as it were, and this one banana being shocked. So I thought I'd take the original banana and do a Boolean operation. Uh, so I did the Boolean, and uh, did I take it? No, I did it just with uh, JNM's Fast Carve uh, bo Boolean tool add-on thing, and it looks like it's worked okay. I'm trying to remember, I felt like I had problems here. Uh, no, I did, but I accidentally did the boolean twice because I didn't think it'd work. So um, make sure you check all your booleans. Uh, that can really mess you up in sculpting like it did the other day for me. Uh, if it goes wrong, uh, trying to fix those uh, issues is very difficult. And lots of people have given me sort of uh, tips to fix them, uh, which is great, but they, um, they, they don't always work, unfortunately. Uh, so the 3D print tools, uh, make manifold, all those sort of things. It, if your mesh is messed up, it doesn't always work, unfortunately. Um, and in fact, I'd suggest going back to 2.79, which I think I've done in a more recent one. I feel like I did it in this. <laughs> I can't remember which day is which now. Um, but uh, the Boolean tools in there, the bool tools, for example, uh, that they're really nice and quick and they work well. So I would suggest that. Um, so for the skin aspect, I did uh, sort of box model or plain model, I suppose this is, um, those aspects. I find with thin objects, trying to sculpt them is quite tough. So things like clothing, um, if it's sort of draping off your character, um, or anything like a banana skin. Uh, so I prefer to model that uh, because uh, of the thin, the thinness of it. <laughs> and it's the... Uh, the thinness uh, that's quite tricky because you end up um, moving the back faces sometimes and they squish together uh, and then you can get lots of problems. Uh, so the sculpting is kind of glitchy in that sense and working out what those glitches are is all important to um, getting fast and uh, not having too many errors and all those sort of things. Uh, so uh, that's the approach I took. I thought about uh, doing a multi-resolution modifier and uh, doing uh, an alt D and was it um, it's not a straight copy it's a what's it copy uh, <laughs> where um, rather than shift D alt D it's a linked copy that's the word I'm looking for uh, so I could just sculpt one and it would appear on the other ones and it actually did work um, but then I had a couple of issues ah oh, that's when I went to 2.79 then I had a couple of issues because 2.8 thought the, uh, the uh, multi-resolution modifier was still there or something I don't quite work, know uh, what happened there, but um, so I sculpted one 
and then um, I could have just duplicated it um, but I thought I'd see if it would update with the linked duplicate and whether the computer could handle a multi-resolution modifier and a linked duplicate and you can see it's working here so that's quite nice to know um, if you sort of quickly want to uh, sculpt three objects at the same time and see what they look like because you can just duplicate the object once you've finished but I wanted to see what it would actually look like whilst I was sculpting and you can see on the screen uh, that's actually working so that's quite a nice thing especially for this because I needed to know that the bananas still linked together uh, in, in the right way so they're the right size basically um, so um, if for that sort of thing it makes sense to uh, sculpt them at the same time but you are only using you can only use that with a multi-resolution modifier because Dian Topo will destroy any vertex data uh, and the linked copies I think will be destroyed it and you know I haven't tried it but I just assume because Dian Topo is very sort of destructive in a sense uh, so I started, uh, yeah, so I'm uh, labeling them all and going across to 2.79. They're a little bit high poly as well, um, and that seems to mess up in 2.8. Um, someone was telling me about uh, graphics cards and um, compatibility um, issues with 2.8, uh, because I suppose when you're programming a new software, you have to uh, make sure it's working with all these different pieces of hardware, especially if it's uh, PC and there can be loads of the different ones so uh, it must be quite hard to get the optimum performance out of a new piece of software that's in beta. <laughs> and again I, I'm pooling my ignorance uh, at the moment I don't know a lot about these things uh, just a little bit. Anyway uh, here I am in 2.79 uh, tidying up the mesh. Um, I thought it hadn't worked at first so I was going inside there but it's sometimes a little bit tough to figure out whether it's worked or not so I thought uh, well the best way to find that out is to just start um, sculpting and see if there's any inaccuracies and then I found out it did work which is quite nice um, it's a good feeling when your booleans work you sort of feel like there's a mini, mini achievement of the day it's an interesting one this because it took um, the raw recording time uh, was about three hours uh, just under but it felt like it took forever um, and I think when things are when you're doing something slightly complicated uh, not that this is particularly complicated, but uh, there's boolean operations, there was uh, a couple of meshes, and th there's a bit of a scene going on with the characters and things. Uh, and that can get busy in your mind. And then, you well, I do, I end up taking more breaks uh, because I feel like, all right, okay, I've re reached that stage, I'm going to take a break now. Uh, so this ended up taking a lot longer than those three hours. Uh, so when I talk about um, this took me this long, it's usually a lot longer because um, that is, like I say, the raw recording time. So when I put it on the timeline, I can see how long it took uh, when I'm just recording. I don't always record everything as well in terms of research. So if I pause and do a bit of research and that sort of thing. Um, so I may have even sort of researched whether I could do that with the uh, multi-resolution modifier. I think I just tried it out anyway. Um, but uh, uh, my point being that uh, lots of people are saying, oh wow, you're doing those really quickly. It's, it's not that fast uh, in, in reality. Uh, so if this was a job, uh, there'd probably be lots of times where I'm um, researching and it, uh, one of these, in reality, I'd probably take a day at least for one of these. Um, so I'd pace myself a bit more so I'm not so frantic for one. And uh, I think you get a better result when you're pacing yourself in the right way. Uh, so that it's not about speed really, although it is with this challenge uh, because I've got to get them in. But um, it's more about um, the, the right timing, to pacing yourself so you get uh, so you can concentrate on it in the right way. I think I'm making sense there anyway, uh, because it is uh, really important uh, to uh, take breaks and step away from the computer. Um, a lot of the time, uh, 2D artists they will flip the canvas. Uh, so they'll see it from another angle uh, with their artwork and it's shocking the difference that can make you suddenly think oh I, uh, my proportions are all out and with 3D you can obviously move around your object and that helps but stepping away from the computer and then coming back to it you'll notice more that's wrong uh, so that's quite important to have regular breaks and, um, and uh, factor them in uh, to your timings uh, so if I was quoting for a job, let's say, if this was a job, uh, I would not quote for three hours work uh, because I think it's uh, a lot longer than that in reality. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, any other questions that I've had? Um, oh, I suppose, um, yes, I, I used um, some rigging for the, 
the banana, the peel banana. So um, I find that's the best way is to uh, rig uh, your objects. Uh, so sculpt your objects uh, so you've got symmetry and things. Uh, then when you're at a comfortable stage, uh, then you rig them, uh, pose them, and then finish off the, the detailed sculpt. Uh, it's a bit of a shame with this because all the banana peels, uh, the three different sort of skin bits, are all exactly the same. And it would have been nice to be able to uh, do a high poly sculpt on them uh, before rigging them, but you have to um, weigh it up how <coughs> high poly you can really go uh, and be able to rig because uh, I, I found that the rigging is okay at about 400,000 faces. I think it can just about go up to there without crashing for me. It might be better in 2.79. I always seem to do this bit in 2.8 just because I prefer to stick in one program, certainly. Um, oh, that's a point someone saying about, uh, or I noticed as well the other day, someone posted about a um, Instant Meg, uh, Instant Meg? Instant Mesh plugin, or add on, I should say, to uh, Blender. So you can use Instant Mesh within Blender now, uh, which is quite exciting, really. It'd be nice not to take things out and have to uh, relabel them and all that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, perhaps worth checking out. Uh, so Instant Mesh is the sort of retopology tool. Uh, so if you need to reduce the, t um, the topology but have an even topology as well of quads, uh, then Instant Mesh is really good. There is the Remesh modifier which does a similar thing in Blender but you can't, um, you can't plan the flow of the lines you can in Instant Mesh which is quite nice. I quickly tried doing a lattice on my banana here because I thought, well it's not a very interesting pose and then I've done something wrong. So when I applied the lattice, my banana squished up. And then I thought, oh, maybe I haven't uh, reset the scale and all that sort of stuff. And then it shifted. So there was something wrong and I couldn't work that out. And I thought, I'm not gonna fiddle about finding out. I'm just gonna pose him with some bones. Um, so he's got a bit of a pose. I should have done a bit more of an extreme pose. I'm a bit disappointed in myself for rushing there um, because the pose is all important to the, the atmosphere, the character, uh, and the, the expression, especially with it's not got a big expression in the face, which is very, the most important, uh, but the body pose could have had a bit more drama to it. I should have looked up shocked poses, and that would have been uh, helpful. So uh, just uh, um, sculpting the minor bits now, uh, the legs, smarting them up, uh, and uh, you know, uh, sorting them out. I didn't want to do too much here because uh, it's a weird banana character, and what do weird banana characters, what is their anatomy? Obviously they've got, uh, if it's a leg, it should look like a leg, but um, it's it, it can be very sort of characterized and simple and quick. Uh, one thing that I always do is, uh, and I, I was consciously thinking a lot about it this time, was my character's placement on the floor. Uh, so with the feet, I tend to uh, rush the feet every single time and not get a flat bottom. So when I put them on the floor, uh, there's sort of like gaps uh, around the place and that's um, really uh, sloppy work. So try and avoid that. Uh, get your plane, your ground plane uh, ready when you're doing the feet so that you know that they're hitting the floor uh, and very, very slightly going into the floor so you know you're not going to get a big shadow between the two. Um, it's, it's my advice there, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sloppy when it comes to that and uh, that's uh, something I need to work on and sort out. It was a bit more tricky with the banana skin obviously uh, because that shape um, had different bits that might go into the ground, you know, to touch the ground or might not. So uh, getting the, um, the banana right, the banana skin right was quite tough. What I actually ended up doing, because it's quite a low poly mesh, um, I went into edit mode and just uh, grabbed uh, a few faces with proportional edit and pulled them down so they were touching the floor. Um, and yeah, so, so here's me doing the base, uh, simple stuff. I did a grid fill this time. Uh, I thought I won't be lazy, I'll do a grid fill so that it doesn't have too many glitches. It's, it's, it can be quite glitchy in Eevee when things aren't, uh, in cycles you can kind of get away with it, uh, with end gons and things, but Eevee didn't seem to like them last time I did it anyway. Uh, so here I am doing the base and uh, putting a grid fill in it this time. Uh, so uh, what am I doing here? Uh, yep, just decimating. So uh, there's no particular detail in my bananas this time, <laughs> or in my mesh, in fact. Uh, so um, I'm just sort of tidying up bits, but I've uh, it's still very low poly, which is quite nice. Uh, so it's quick to move things around. 
Uh, and that's an important point actually. Uh, it, try and stay as low poly as you can and think about the end detail and what it's going to look like. Um, do you need uh, a really high poly mesh? Because it's so much easier to adapt and pull things around when they're low poly. The banana shape, for example, um, I kept very, very low res, like uh, three on my constant detail. Uh, so I usually um, check the resolution of the, the um, sphere as I sculpt and then think, right, I'll bring that down or up depending on the resolution I need. Uh, and so it was really low res when I started out. Uh, so I could get the shape and it's much easier to get big shapes with low resolution. If you go too high uh, manipulating the shape it goes really blobby really quickly especially with the snake hook tool. Uh, but if you need sort of minor details then yes obviously uh, but keep it as low resolution as possible. So here I am in painting uh, mode, the texture paint mode. Every now and again it goes black and if I go, I found if I went to edit mode and back uh, that would sort it out. And I was having a few glitches uh, but this was my own silly fault. Um, I wanted to use a texture brush, so that's the texture mask. Uh, so it's like Photoshop then, the texture masks. Uh, they're sort of brush heads, uh, but textures are uh, like stencils that you paint on. And I accidentally added my noise texture to the texture instead of the texture mask and only found that out after a little while. Uh, so it was, a being, it was being a bit glitchy, but that was actually user error. Uh, bananas are kind of interesting things to paint really because uh, it's so organic you can really go to town and on the brown bits and the blobs and all that sort of thing and they still look quite alright. Uh, but perfectly yellow didn't quite look right. The interesting thing is my Wacom screen uh, uh, tends to give everything a very sort of vivid and almost orangey colour and I know I can change that in the settings and things but it's, uh, I'm just surprised it's, that's its default um, so I always forget that and I should be changing it so that all my monitors are pretty much the same. But uh, it turned out a lot more yellowy than I was expecting. Um, so, and it, I, I quite like that rich orange color, it was quite nice. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's, uh, I suppose you should calibrate all your monitors really uh, if you are a digital artist and uh, get them looking right there. There's tools you can uh, buy and you sort of print things out and all that sort of stuff uh, to calibrate them. I think there's some special thing you can attach to your screen as well to calibrate your mon monitors. Uh, but uh, getting the colors right is, is really important. So if your monitor's way out, which mine probably are because they have cheap monitors apart from my Wacom. So I always think my Wacom ought to be the right one, but I feel like it's the wrong one. Uh, and the other ones, they tend to be a bit sort of undersaturated, uh, really sort of bright. Um, but sort of washed out in terms of colours. Um, so if there's any companies out there that want to send me a free monitor, that'd be lovely. Uh, anyway, uh, I keep, keep asking for these things, but why would a company be watching this and then, oh yeah, we'll send you a monitor, don't worry. Yeah, I, I have been approached for um, some sponsorship recently. I think it's because I'm gaining near 50,000 subscribers. So uh, perhaps some sponsorship on the way that would, um, hopefully then I can um, keep doing this as it were, and uh, it justifies all the work that I put into the channel. And I can keep producing videos if I get sponsored and uh, not feel like I ought to be doing something else with my time. <laughs> something more useful where I can get lots of money. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm rambling now, I've, I've done it again. Don't do that. Uh, so uh, a bump texture for the legs, I thought they'd be the sort of like inside uh, banana pulp, I think it's called. Is it called pulp, the inside of banana? Um, yep, so I uh, used that there. I, for the texture painting, I actually changed the brush stroke from space to dots, uh, or just increased the space and jitter, and then I could get sort of uh, spots up and down my banana. And there we go, there's the final result. I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out, it's good fun. Um, like I said, I would have liked a bit more expression and shock on my character. Um, but it, it works, it, it's, it's working and I'm pleased. It's certainly good fun, it was nice to do a sort of cartoony one for a change, but it did give me a headache, all the different aspects to it. Uh, okay, so the Discord server, uh, well done to everybody who's uh, joining in the Sculpt January. Uh, some nice ones this week. Uh, so there's Hun Apple Pies, but I can't actually read his name, so he signed it, well done, signing it, but I couldn't actually read the name. Uh, there's uh, Simon and Anus, uh, obscure, that's quite a good idea, just doing a really obscure character, I like that. Uh, so do put your names on your uh, posts, that's helpful to me, because I can't read them and I, they go, um, I go through them fairly quickly, so as not to spend too much time. Uh, but uh, putting a name on, Lirum, for example, uh, well done, uh, it really helped. Uh, Mr. 
M. I, I always want to say Mr. T. <laughs> it's Mr. M. Uh, some nice work there from you. Well, probably my favourite. Uh, and there's the Spartan Warrior, Spartan Helmet uh, tutorial. Uh, that was a good, good effort there. Well done. Nice toy there. Uh, probably one of my favourites as well. Uh, and that's quite a cool fish thing. I like it. Uh, so I scrolled through looking for a favourite. And I think probably my favourite is uh, Mr. M's. Mr. A. Oh, I've lost it now. <laughs> that one is really good. And the toy was really good as well. So thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope you're still with us with Sculpt January. I hope you're still with me watching this. Thanks for all the support and thanks for your comments. And I will see you next time.